Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, and this is SCBI, and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. Well, it's Groundhog Day. Happy Groundhog Day. How are you doing? It's, uh, it's uh, uh, February already. Boy, we are, we are easing into it. You know, our show, Eye on the Valley, I should probably set it up first before we get into that. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you by SCVI and I lead schools. We are a network of charter schools. And remember, friends, when I say charter, I mean free. Charter schools are public schools. So we are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've got a fully accredited online school, a, 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 just a great home study program called iLead Exploration. In fact, you're going to hear a little bit about iLead Exploration here in just a few minutes. But uh, for more information on any of our schools, you can check us out at iLeadSchools.org. That is iLeadSchools.org. We've got uh, classroom-based charters. We've got virtual charters. We've got everything that you need that your child needs, actually, for the education that is customized and tailored to their educational needs. Again, iLeadSchools.org. So yeah, we keep our eye on education. We certainly do uh, here in Santa Clarita and across the nation. But like the show says, we keep our eye on the valley as well, bringing you everything that you need to know about what's what here in the valley. So yeah, it is It is Groundhog's Day. Yesterday was a nasty SoCal winter day. We had rain coming in hot and heavy and then sun and then more rain. It was a little crazy yesterday. So uh, today is the day when we find out how much longer it's going to last. You know, back way back east in, in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, it's a groundhog that decides. But I think here in Southern California, we watch to see if the coyote comes out from behind the dumpster or not. And uh, I have it on uh, on good authority that uh, that he did climb out of that dumpster and wander across the highway, meaning, of course, it's going to be an early spring for us. That's right. It's going to be an early spring is what they're predicting, what that... Uh, that rodent and, and, and that little dog have predicted. So there it is, everybody. Again, happy Groundhog's Day. It's going to be a great show today, uh, right here on Eye in the Valley. Our today, on today's show, we've got Tina Toval. She's actually uh, on the line, and we'll get to Tina in just a minute. Tina is with iLead AV Exploration. What's that, you ask? Well, you'll have to stick around and find out. But, uh, but here's a little teaser. It might just be the most innovative free public school option in Southern California. If you've got a school-aged kid, you're going to you're going to want to see the public school program that Tina and her team have built. Uh, don't have school-aged kids? Well, that's fine. You're still going to want to stick around cuz well, one, cuz Tina's going to inspire you. She's just absolutely amazing. I've had the uh, good fortune to work with Tina for well over a decade now. She's definitely got uh, lots of inspiration. Number 2, another reason you're going to want to stick around. We're going to uh, we're going to tune you in to a program that, uh, that you'll want to get behind. I want to share a little bit about something that I actually did last weekend that was just really inspirational and exciting for me, something that I'm uh, throwing my support behind and you'll probably want to as well. And then three, we've got some things that, uh, that you'll want to do this weekend. Not sure what's going on this weekend. You know, I walked into the studio and, and Lisa behind the counter said, hey, what are you doing this weekend? I said, man, there's a lot going on. So, uh, so we'll set your weekend up for you. And to top that off, we'll, we'll get you ready for the Super Bowl, and, uh, and we got a little bit of a test for you. And we've got a little bit of a test for you. you this is a test you're going to want to take. Check yourself a little bit. And talking about tests, Big T has some trivia for us. You know, last week, oh man, Engineer Jen and me, we got our butts kicked by Mayor Smythe. Man, how'd y'all do at home? Did you play last week? I just absolutely embarrassed myself. I missed not just one, I missed three fourth grade math questions. I know Tina's going to be disappointed when she gets on. I taught fourth grade with Tina for, for years, and, uh, and yeah, I missed four fourth grade, or three fourth grade math questions. So I'm going to try to redeem myself this week, and uh, I know Engineer Jen's feeling strong. How about you there at home? Well, well, we will see. So stick around. You can play with us and, and see if you can beat me as badly as the mayor did last week. So all of that is on today's episode of Eye on the Valley. 
So like I said, my first guest this morning is Tina Toval with iLead AV Exploration. Tina is an alum from Cal State University Northridge, earning her bachelor's degree in liberal studies as well as her multiple subject teaching credential. Just last year, uh, Tina completed her administrative credentialing program and uh, is working on her master's degree in educational administration. She's worked in education for 16 years now and started her journey with Eileen during her last semester of college as a student teacher at SCVI during its founding year. That's right. Her, her first year with SCVI was their founding year, and her first several years, she was a fourth and fifth grade facilitator where I, as I mentioned, personally benefited and professionally as well because I got to be on her team before we both transitioned into our administrative roles. Tina is currently working at iLead Antelope Valley as a lead educational facilitator with their exploration program. She has actually helped develop that program. It is the newest exploration program, which is our home study, by the way. And we call we call our home study program exploration. And so so it combines homeschool learning with project-based learning, and Tina's going to tell you all about it. She also has an amazing son who keeps her on her toes. She loves playing with him and taking him on adventures, exploring their interests together. She truly is an amazing educator and mother, and, and Tina loves her a good old dad joke. Tina, welcome back to Eye on the Valley. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having me again. Uh, Tina, I was going to, I'm thinking about Groundhog Day, and, and did you ever see that movie Groundhog Day, Tina? I have, yeah. And it just reminds me of that Sonny and Cher song, right? That just every every Groundhog Day that, that that song pops up. I was never a big Sonny and Cher fan, though. Do you like do you like music, Tina? I do like music. Who's yeah. your favorite artist? Oh, I mean, I have to be a Swifty right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta be. Gosh. I mean, I have to say that, otherwise, you know. Yeah, absolutely have to. Yeah. You know me. I'm a little bit more old school. I think my favorite artist is Dean Martin. You know, I love that song. That's Amore. You know that song, that, that, that old good one? That, you know, it says, When you're down by the sea and an eel bites your knee, that's amore. Oh Is that how it goes? Amore, eel, yeah, come on, here we go. <laughs> okay, let's get back on track, shall we? Tina, as I mentioned, um, you have been with iLead from the very beginning, way back when we were just one teeny tiny school over there on Smythe Drive. So tell us a little bit about what uh, what initially attracted you, because, you know, most folks in their, their student teaching program go the traditional district route, but you joined us over at SCVI. What attracted you to SCVI? And then, more importantly, at least for my story, I don't know about yours, what kept you with iLead? Because, uh, you know, I did the same thing. I went over to SCVI for a year, and and here we are, what, 13, 14 years later. So what brought you to SCVI, and what kept you with iLead all these years? Uh, yeah, so as you mentioned, I was introduced to SCVI as a student teacher. I was finishing my uh, teaching credential program and was brought in, the, you know, new brand-new charter school, still kind of developing, and immediately absolutely fell in love with everything about what iLead stood for and what they valued in education. So I was really excited and happy to be hired the following year, you know, as a full-time teacher and yeah, like the rest of history really. And as far as, you know, what's, what's kept me here, um, you know, being with Ivy since the beginning when we were so small, really like figuring things out and then watching it grow into what we are today, serving so many different learners and families. I've, really been fortunate enough to experience firsthand and understand the value in maintaining such a beautiful culture that we have at Ivy with of family and empathy and compassion and leadership and really putting kids first. And I have worked with so many different educators and leaders throughout the years and I can confidently say that everyone I have worked with in Ivy absolutely one hundred percent puts kids first and that has stayed consistent throughout the years um, that iLead has grown and developed as an organization. And, um, yeah, I think they they do a wonderful job with that. And if anything, they've gotten better and adapted over the years. And I'm just so constantly proud to be a part of iLead. Well, and you've been a huge part of that, that culture development and growth and and adaptation. Uh, I guess growth is is 
a big theme when I when I look at uh, at you and and how you've grown with our organization. I've seen your career grow, your family grow as our organization mm-hmm. grows, and you've shifted and adapted and and played quite a few different roles with our organization. Can you talk about? So you started with us as a student teacher. Talk about how you've grown to uh, to where you're at now <laughs> at I Lead AV. Yeah, so I started student teaching. I was uh, student teaching seventh grade then was hired the following year as a fourth grade teacher, taught fourth grade for a few years, and then started doing multi-age instruction with a wonderful team. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, um, then yeah, transitioned into an administrative role working with school directors and the leadership team at SCBI, and that went up into 2020. And then after 2020, I transitioned into the homeschool world. So now I'm helping develop this homeschool program and um, yeah, I have really found my groove in, in home study or in the exploration world with iLead. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier, you're doing something really creative and innovative. Um, you know, several years back, uh, one of the tasks that I was given that I really struggled with was, Matt, can you help us figure out how to introduce what iLead does really well, which is project-based learning? How can we introduce mm-hmm. that in homeschooling? Because the struggle always was, well, if, if, if it's the parents that are leading the education, not so much the staff, how can we, we roll that in? And that was kind of the call that, that you were given is, can you build a program through the homeschool model that focuses on project-based learning? So I want to give our our fam or our listeners a little taste of what project based learning is. So can you talk to us a little bit about what project based learning is and why it's so important in the educational process? Yeah, yeah. So project based learning uh, really takes learning and puts it into a project for kids. It's super important because it really allows the kids to have the opportunity to take their learning outside of the classroom, right? So yeah. you can really draw upon their potential interests, their passions, and it just gives them a bit more freedom and control over what direction they want to take their learning, especially as a homeschool learner, right? So um, they can think of different ways to take their learning to the next level by solving a problem, rather a personal problem, a real-world problem, um, making an impact in their community, and or just diving deeper into a particular field of study, but it really goes beyond the four walls of the classroom, memorizing facts, regurgitating them, right? It just creates a deeper level of understanding and really like a greater sense of purpose in learning something. So, and the great thing is it can span across all subjects, right? You can pull in the math Mm -hmm. pieces, language art pieces, science pieces, even historical components. And, make it things connect in a way that makes sense to them and gets them excited about learning. So, you know, there's a place for memorizing things and, and um, you know, facts and sure. having to regurgitate that, right? There's a time and place for that. But at the end of the day, you want kids to be excited about learning and you want them to think outside the box. And project-based learning really lends itself to that um, because it allows the kids to kind of take on their own learning and what they want to do. Yeah, and that is neat. You know, you and I have seen it and, and heard parents especially comment on it. When kids get excited about learning, there, there really is no limit to what they can do. And, and we would hear families all the time tell us, you know, that they, they were up at the crack of dawn, could not wait to get to school. Or, you know, we would see yeah. kids when we would go on vacation bummed out because they wanted to keep working on their projects. Can you give our listeners a little bit, maybe a, a couple, three examples of uh, um what we're talking about, what are some of those projects that have pulled in maybe multiple subjects that get, get kids engaged and excited about those standards, those things that they, they have to normally learn? But uh, So what are the, some of the projects that you've put together over your time with us at iLead? Uh, well, I always, you know, especially in the beginning, you want to build on different projects, right? You go a little bit deeper each time. Mm-hmm. So I always do like to start the year with, like, some kind of, like, identity or who am I project where – you know, younger kids can talk about where they come from and what they like and who their family is and, you know, embracing things that make them unique. And then as they start getting older, looking at things like culture and heritage and diving deeper into who they are, who they want to become, how they're being shaped into the person they want to become, right? So I kind of like to start there. And you can still pull in some of those pieces. Um, I love the project, you know, we've done together where they take on the role of a doctor and they have to diagnose a patient and look at different things that are going on and really help them understand that it's the process that they're taking and learning and investigating and problem solving rather than 
the end result or in that case for that project, the diagnosis, right? It's really honing in on like what the process of problem solving looks like. Um, so that's another favorite. I do love when we do what we call like a genius hour project and that was inspired by actually what Google does where, you know, they allow their employees to take something that they're passionate about and dive deeper and learn more about it. So we do that with our kids oftentimes. We do a genius hour project where they take on any piece, anything that they're passionate about and really get deeper into it and um, teach others about it and kind of show what they've learned throughout that process. So those are kind of three that stand out to me, but there's so many projects we've done over yeah. over the decade, right? So, but yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun and... Anything to get the kids excited really can take them to the next level as far as the next project they do. Yeah, and, and gosh, Tina, I love kind of kind of nerding out with you on project-based learning. It really is my jam. It's what, what I get excited about. But I know you're here to talk about this amazing program that you've helped to, to build called iLead AV Exploration. And uh, we've kind of been beating around the bush a little bit this morning. And I want to give you, well, Tina, I want to give you plenty of time to talk about it and explain to our listeners everything that you're doing at iLead AV because your families aren't just up in the Antelope Valley, right? You've got families from here in Santa Clarita, really all over the place. Yep. I, I'll tell you what, Tina, let's let's take a quick break and, and we'll talk about it when we get back. But before I do, Tina... Um, like I said, I know you do like a good dad joke, but you're not here in the studio. Um, you're joining us via teleconference. And as it turns out, Tina, I'm not even remotely funny. So I'm going to stay away from oh that. <laughs> Tina Toval from iLead AV Exploration joins me this morning. She's running an incredibly innovative program that is free to everyone. You'll hear more about it when we get back. I'm Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCBI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCVI and iLead School's Eye on the Valley. I'm joined this morning by Tina Toval with iLead AV Exploration. And as we were mentioning before, Tina and I have worked together for over a decade now and just uh, been able to, to grow and connect together professionally and personally and uh, just really enjoy sharing with Tina. I was sharing with Tina actually a, a pretty scary thing that happened to me the other night. Um, sharing with her that uh, that the other night I I was mugged by six dwarves. Yeah, not happy. Anyway, Tina, <laughs> before the break, there it is. Wait for it. It'll hit you. <laughs> oh my God. All righty. Tina, before the break, we started talking about this program, I Lead AV Exploration, but uh, I want to give you some time to, to really spread out and, and share this program with our listeners. Tell us a little bit about what your role at I Lead Antelope Valley Exploration entails. What, what is it that you do? So I support families with their homeschool journey, right? So a lot of our families at Ivy Davy Exploration are new homeschool families. Not all of them, but a lot of them are new to homeschool. They aren't sure how to do homeschool. They want to homeschool, but they're not sure what that entails. So my job is to really support them through that process, make it as easy as possible, help support their, their learning at home with their child, and then I also support our teachers doing the same for our families. And then, of course, pull in that project-based learning lens to homeschool as well. So uh, a few different things, but uh, really it's getting our families to feel comfortable and be, feel successful with homeschooling. That is fantastic. And I love that the, uh, the mm -hmm. staff has the support of, of an expert like you and, and you're there to support the families as well. So you've touched on it already a little bit, but uh, I Lead Antelope Valley Exploration is a, a really unique program. So can you tell us maybe well, let's start from the traditional school. What differentiates I Lead AV Exploration from, from a traditional brick-and-mortar uh, typical school? Well, so we are a home school, so um, they don't go into school every day as like a brick-and-mortar school. They do their learning at home. Um, nor typical, uh, typical home school programs, you're able to pick your child's curriculum, kind of uh, pick from a menu of different curriculums with math, language, arts, science, right, um, and kind of figure out which direction you want to go. Now, for a new homeschool 
parent, that could be really overwhelming. They might not know what curriculum is the best, or they might not really understand how to teach that curriculum. So at iLead AV Exploration, we do all that work for you. We have an award-winning curriculum. It's a specific homeschool curriculum geared toward helping parents in helping their child learn, right? So we pick their curriculum for them. We give them all the supplies they need. We give them their technology, all the books, and then we also provide workshops on campus for the kids two days a week where they can get those extracurricular classes in. We do art. We do reader's theater. We do different things that kind of can pique their interest. And we also offer synchronous instruction so they can get on Zoom and we do lessons based on where their level is. They get assessed. They're put in groups that um, are appropriate for where they're at academically. And then we meet with the families uh, weekly so that way we can make sure that they are getting the support they need, that they're getting any questions answered, and that we can help kind of guide them through their homeschool journey. Wow, that, that really is unique. You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of families over the last few years um, since the pandemic, Tina, and, you know, there are a lot of families that, boy, they just couldn't wait for their kids to get back on campus. But there were quite a few kids and families that really thrived during this whole phenomenon of, of distance learning, or maybe they just sort of realized, hey, you know, we do need something a little bit different than the typical brick and mortar. And But the problem that most families come up against is this notion that I could never homeschool. I wouldn't know where to start. I can't yeah. be the one that's 100% responsible. So, so you kind of <clears throat> ease your families into that. Um, I know uh, in our, our, we call it big exploration, in our, our genuinely mm-hmm. home study program, you've got, like you said, hundreds of different uh, curricular decisions to make. You know, which math program do you want? Well, what is there? I don't know. What's the best? Yeah. It can be really yeah. tough. So you provide the curriculum. You said you also mm-hmm. provide technology, but it truly is a hybrid program where you've got kids coming onto your campus for workshops a couple times a week, and then you also do the Zoom kind of thing. So you've got the yeah. the best of the home study, the best of on-campus, You've got the virtual. You've got all different kinds of things. So it really is that that kind of hybrid program, right? Yeah, yeah, it's great. And we even do field trips, and the field trips are like family meetups, right? So mom's there, sibling, dad, you know, cousin. So it really kind of instills back to what I was saying before of, like, that community of, like, family, right? So um, we, we are developing our own little homeschool community, and our families are getting to know each other and relying on each other, and it's... It's, it's a young program, but it's so beautiful. Well, gosh, and I think that answers probably most families' second biggest concern. <laughs> that first one, I could never do it. Well, Tina and, and her team are there, and they're going to give you just a ton of support. So, yes, you can, um, no matter yeah. what kind of lifestyle you've got. And then um, that second concern that families often have is, well, I don't want to homeschool my kid because I want them to be able to interact with other kids. I want them to have that social network. Your kids are still getting all that. Oh, yeah. They're definitely getting it. They're getting it virtually. They're getting it in person. And I've had, I've heard, I've had families say, like, wow, I never thought I could homeschool. And here they are three years in and, like, saying to me, if you would have told me that I would have homeschooled my kids, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's such a seamless process um, and, uh, you know, parents get to learn alongside their kids and have the flexibility at home to do things at their pace and on their schedule. So yeah. it's, been, it's been great. And Tina, one of the beautiful things about a charter school, well, first of all, it's it's free. There's no tuition involved, but there's no real like district boundaries. So you can draw folks from pretty much anywhere around Southern California, but your campus is based in the Antelope Valley up in, in Lancaster on Avenue K. But do families need to live in Lancaster? Do they need to be local? Is it uh, something that they really have to live close by the campus in order to attend? No, absolutely not. We have several families, you know, here in Santa Clarita. We have some in Lancaster. We have some in Rosemont. So you can, it really spans across um, several valleys. So they don't have to be close at all. Okay, but what about those workshops? If I've got to get my kid up to Lancaster, because you know me, I live here in Mm -hmm. Saugus. If I've got to get my kid up to Lancaster twice a week, that can be pretty inconvenient. So does that provide a, a problem for your families? No, no. We have families that come and drop their kids off for workshop, even though they live far, and then families who don't do workshops. So it's completely optional, not something they have to do. They still have those opportunities to interact with their peers on Zoom. And then 
our field trips are, you know, in several different areas. Our last one we did out here in Santa Clarita at the Cube, and the kids went ice skating, and uh, tons of kids came. So, you know, we try to kind of do different meetups in different areas, but they absolutely can choose to come and make the drive or they don't have to, and that's fine too. So it really is that that hybrid learning where you've got the home study component, you've got the on-campus component, if families choose, you've got the, the virtual, the Zoom component. Again, if families choose, you've got the field study, if families choose, it, it's this perfect kind of buffet where you get to, to choose your own educational experience, a, a, a truly hybrid option for families. So. Th- This is really amazing, and this is what I was talking about, about being so innovative. You and your team have built something really beautiful up there. So if families are interested, Tina, tell us how enrollment works. How do families get involved? Are you taking applications for next year? Are you currently enrolling now? How can families get involved? Yeah, so we are taking applications for next year, so they can go to our website, iLeadAZ.org, and they want to make sure they click on the home study or the exploration option, and they can um, fill out an interest form there, and then we do have our lottery coming up, so as long as they enroll before April 5th, then they'll be put in the lottery, and then we do have a few... Uh, info sessions coming up that they can sign up for online too. That we have virtual information sessions and in person ones, as well as like a kindergarten roundup, which is uh, focusing on our incoming kindergartners, and that also virtual ones and in person. So all that they can sign up for online. Fantastic! Yeah, I'm I'm looking at uh, at your website now. You said iLeadAV.org, and then right underneath it. it You've got a, a button that says learning options, and yep. uh, that's that's the that's the beautiful thing about iLead and, and charter schools in general. Families have options. They can choose what's best for their kid. So iLeadAV.org, I'm looking at learning options. You've got iLeadAV Hybrid Studio, and then IV, iLeadAV Exploration Home Study, and then you've got another yep. button that says our iLead community that's just more about our schools. So... Families can choose that that kind of studio campus option, but the program you're talking about is the Exploration Home Study. So learning options, I lead AV Exploration Home Study, and look at that. It takes me right to the enrollment form, and 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 families can enroll. So let me ask again, Tina, um, are you still enrolling for, because I know you're just about to start or just starting <coughs> second semester. Um, are you taking families currently? Um, right now we have a little wait list, so, but, you know, oftentimes wait lists tend to move quickly. So if they enroll for this year, they will be put on our wait list. And then if they get in this year, that's great because then they're guaranteed a spot for next year. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Oh, yeah. so that's kind of an interesting little hack. If, um, if you're thinking about it and you're, you're <laughs> excited about it for next year, but you want to make sure that you get in because you do have a lottery, um, try, try joining us for second semester and that, that guarantees that you keep your spot. You mentioned you've got some upcoming events, and I'm looking on your website. Again, iLeadAV.org. I just clicked on events, and I see, well, Monday the 12th, just uh, in about a week and a half, you've got virtual information sessions on your home study program. So families don't even need to leave the house, and they can uh, attend your uh, your informational session. That's on Tuesday, February, or I'm sorry, uh, Monday, February 12th. You've got another one on March 12th. Um Gosh, you've got Kindergarten Roundup coming up in April. Yeah, so you've got all kinds of events. One more time, if families are interested, they can go to iLeadAV.org. They can register now. They can sign up for the lottery to register for next school year. One more time, iLeadAV.org or iLeadAV.org backslash events, and that'll circumvent even that event button, and, and you can check it out. Well, fantastic, Tina. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Tina, before you go... I do want to I, I want to quiz you for just a second, okay? I want to give you a quick oh four question <clears throat> quiz, all right? So, Tina, you okay. taught fourth grade for years and years and years. These are all fourth grade questions, super easy, right? So, okay. a, a group of fish. What do we call a group of fish? A school. A school, that's right. Very on topic. You run a school, a group of fish is a school. What about a group of cows, Tina? Um no cattle. 
Okay, we, we refer to them collectively as cattle, but a group of cows is called a herd. A herd, okay. okay. So we're, we're one for yeah. one. All right, now, now this third one gets a little tough here. All right, do you know what a group of crows is called? You know, the blackbirds, crows. Do you know what a group of crows is called? Uh, I don't think I know what a group of crows is called. Engineer Jen is looking at me. Do you know? It's right on the tip of my tongue. It's uh, actually, it's, it's kind of creepy. It's a murder. A murder, yeah. A group that's of crows right. is it's called weird. a murder. Isn't that weird, Tina? Yeah. Alf- Why would they do that? I don't know, <laughs> but Alfred Hitchcock would be proud. All right? Oh, God. So, really? yeah, we've got a, a group of, uh, of fish is called a school. A group of cows is it called a herd. A group mm. of crows is called a murder. Tina, do you know what a group of Karens is called? A group of Karens. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, can I say that? I don't know. <laughs> it's called a group, a, a group of Karens is called a homeowners association. Oh my gosh. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> Tina, thanks again for joining me. I appreciate it. One more time. That's iLeadAV.org and you can check out the amazing exploration program there up at iLeadAV. The most innovative in free public education. Tina, you have a great weekend. And you, what are you doing this weekend? Well, we've got some ideas for you when we get back. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. We'll be right back with you on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. We, uh, we were joined previously by Tina Toval. Tina is an amazing educator. She started her career with SCVI, our our founding charter school here in Castaic, and uh, she's now up at iLead AV, running iLead AV's exploration program. And she talked about how you or pretty much anybody in Southern California can join them. Uh, they've got just an amazing hybrid program where families are being supported in a home study program that also offers on-campus workshops and uh, virtual uh, synchronous uh, live virtual sessions. They've got uh, field trips and all different kinds of stuff. They're doing great things there at iLead AV Exploration. One more time, if you're interested, check them out at iLeadAV.org, and then you can click on Learning Options, and you can choose that studio, which is more of an on-campus feel, or the exploration program, which is, uh, like I said, that truly hybrid option of home study plus uh, plus time on campus and, and things like that. But uh, we were asking... Um, what you've got going on this weekend. So there's there's a whole lot going on. I love living here in Southern California. You know, everybody else around the country is just absolutely buried in snow and what well, which is why that that groundhog is so important, right? Got to let them know when they can put their shovels away and, and come back outside. But we here in Southern California, we just get beautiful weather pretty much all the time and so we can continue to have all these amazing community events that we do here in Santa Clarita. So for example, this weekend, uh, tomorrow, that's Saturday, February 3rd, Boy Scout Troop 583 is hosting a get outside day. Love that. <laughs> the rain is gone. Get outside, darn it. The leaders and scouts of Troop 583 would like to invite you to the Santa Clarita community, would like to invite you and the rest of the Santa Clarita community to join them for a fun day at Valley Trails. Get introduced to the scouting program, have a great time, do a little hiking. The event called Get Outside Day, again, is tomorrow, Saturday, February 3rd, from 8.30 to 1 p.m. for $5. Boys interested in the scouting program will be able to participate in archery, a scavenger hunt, relay races, supervised BB gun activities, <laughs> uh, and, and an accr- on an accredited range, so it's safe and and everybody's good. So, uh, yeah, if, if your kid might be interested in the scouts, take them out there to Boy Scout Troop 583's Get Outside Day, Saturday at 8.30 a.m. You can RSVP to, get your pencils, this is a long one, <laughs> troop583scoutsbsa at gmail.com. That's easy, BSA is Boy Scouts of America, so it's troop583scoutsbsa at gmail.com. We've also got the Hope Theater Arts presenting Rev. That is actually tonight. Rev is a riveting theatrical work by playwright Rachel Baikowski. The play delves into the intricacies of human relationships and the complexities of love, loss, and transformation. What a great date night. 
So, uh, and, and it all takes place in a mechanic's garage on the west side of Chicago. Well, that's where it's, it's set, right? But it takes place here in, in Santa Clarita. You know what? For more information, just go to the website, hopetheaterarts.com. Like I said, great date night. We've got some of the best restaurants in Southern California right here in Santa Clarita. So uh, grab that special someone, grab a bite to eat, and check out um, Rev at Hope Theater Arts. HopeTheaterArts.com for more information. The Cultural Community Showcase is coming up tomorrow, February 3rd. The Raising the Curtain Foundation. Oh, beautiful foundation. The community coming together to make sure that live theater is, is strong and healthy here in Santa Clarita. The Raising the Curtain Foundation, in partnership with the City of Santa Clarita Public Library, proudly presents the second annual Cultural Community Showcase. This vibrant, vibrant event celebrates the rich diversity of the Santa Clarita Valley, featuring an array of performances from local performing arts groups. For more details, just Google Newhall Family Theater of the Performing Arts. Newhall Family Theater of the Performing Arts to learn all about it. And check this out. Do you like improv? Well, the Society Comedy Troupe Improv Night at the Main is also tomorrow, Saturday, February 3rd. If you've ever seen, um, what's the show? Whose Line Is It Anyway yeah. with, with Ryan Stiles? Yeah, you'll, you'll know exactly what to expect when you come see the Society perform their brand of hilarious and clean improv comedy live. So it's a, a show for the whole family. Using your suggestions as launching pads, they create completely spontaneous and improvised shows. So no show is ever the same twice. You can go back over and over and over again. More information and tickets are available at the main, it's at at the main.org their website is actually <laughs> at the main.org check it out they've got a lot of stuff going on at the main and also we want you to save the date on uh what is this april 27th and 28th khts's home and garden show and emergency expo is taking place so put that in your calendar put a pin put a pin in it april 27th and 28th it is always one of the premier community events of the spring. That is KHTS's annual home and garden show and emergency expo. You know what? For more information about all of these events, can't figure out what to do this weekend, just check uh, check us out on the KHTS website, hometownstation.com. That's hometownstation.com. You know, last week we featured a guest and gave you a tip on something to do, and, and I decided to, uh, to take my own advice. I'm talking about the Carousel Ranch Pancake Breakfast and Pajama Party fundraiser kickoff. Well, it, it sounded like uh, a, a lot of you listened to me because we went out and, and they had the biggest turnout that this event has ever seen. I was out there and it was just absolutely amazing. Some of the participants in the Carousel Ranch uh, Ready to Work program actually made breakfast for us. It was nice. fantastic. And it wasn't just pancakes. They had coffee and hot chocolate, of course. It was a, a cool little breezy morning, but they also had mimosas for us. Oh, wow. And it was That's all nice. free. It, it was fantastic. And uh, are you familiar with Carousel Ranch? They are just an amazing organization. Carousel Ranch is dedicated to improving the lives of children and young adults with special needs. Through both their equestrian therapy and vocational training programs, they're doing, they're doing just great things to create an atmosphere where every student can and will succeed. A place where therapy is disguised as fun, fun works its way into therapy, and in fact, I was talking to the dad of one of the students there uh, in the in the Ready to Work program, and he was just raving about it. He was he was telling me just a few years ago he had no idea how his son could ever become independent, and and that was fine. He loves his son, but you know we all want to see our kids grow up and be successful. But today, not only is his son working and growing his career with the support of uh, the uh, the program there at Carousel Ranch. But, uh, but he's living on his own. He, he's even got his eye on a special young lady who's Aww. also in the program. It was just so inspiring, nice. so sweet to see all the amazing things going on out there at Carousel Ranch. And Well, they, I do have to ask, though, oh, yeah. the, the pressing question. Uh, did you participate in the kissing booth that they had? I, I heard that there was did. a, uh, a, a lovely... did donkey is that yes, right <laughs> yes i i did it was it was ten dollars and i got my smooch from earl earl and, yes. yeah i was i was super excited earl and, and the donkey yeah he could oh. not he just couldn't wait to get the uh, the the human smell off of him when <laughs> when we were done but uh, i did i did participate All in right, the kissing good. booth that's, it was a great event and that's the highlight Ranch, yes yeah oh definitely <laughs> 
<laughs> Carousel Ranch is kicking off their annual month, February, their campaign, their giving campaign. It's a month of giving. Yes, they're inviting you to make your generous donation on their website, carouselranch.org, uh, a more than worthy cause. But they've also got some fun and creative well, and delicious ways to donate. They've got Valograms where you can send a delicious nothing but cake Valentine's treats with a special Valentine's Day note uh, to that special someone. Or, well, gosh, anyone you love, your friends, your family. They also have a different restaurant partner every Thursday night in February who will donate a portion of their proceeds back to the ranch. Last night was Marston's, but uh, if you missed it last night, they've also got uh, a partnership with Salt Creek, Wicked Chicken, Wolf Creek, and Jersey Mike's coming up this month. So uh, take your date to the designated restaurant on Thursday nights this month and share the love with Carousel Ranch or, you know, what the heck, take the whole family and share lots of love. Again, uh, check them out at carouselranch.org. That's carouselranch.org. And then also check out uh, everything that's going on this weekend at hometownstation.com. You, you won't regret it. You won't regret donating to Carousel Ranch. You won't regret checking out what, uh, what you've got going on this weekend at hometownstation.com. Dot com. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. The, the phones are ringing. Um, I, I, I think I might have gotten myself into a little hot water. Uh -oh. um, Is it Earl? Jen? No, it's okay. not <laughs> Earl. No, er, you know, Earl actually kind of enjoyed my, my love. Um, but I think I might have said something on the air that, that I shouldn't have. Lisa's kind of waving at me and um, uh -oh. I, I think I might have gotten myself. Are you pushing the envelope yet again? Uh, well, I, I thought it was innocuous. You know, um, our, our previous guest, Tina Toval, um, she and I play around. She always, when we talked together, we would always roll her eyes and uh, at my dad jokes. And she would say, oh, dad. And, and so I like to share dad jokes with her. But like I said, the phones are ringing and people... I think I've upset some people with something that I might have said. So I'm going to have to look into it. Um, I tell you what, Jen, let's let's take a quick break. You got it. I, I, I think I have to do a little bit of research. There may be an apology coming up. So stick around. I, I might be in a little trouble. I am Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCDI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. All right, Jen, um, I mentioned before the break, we've gotten a couple phone calls, um, uh -oh. and I think I said something that, um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have said on the radio. Are you being offensive again? Um, I don't know. <laughs> and that's what I've been trying to figure out, and, and Jen and I have been talking about it. Um, I had to do a little research. Um, yeah, some folks have been calling the station to, to complain. I, I, I said something at the end of our second segment that got up under some people's skin. Um, you know, Tina Toval was our, our first guest this morning from iLead AV Exploration. She was on the line. Now, Tina and I have worked together for over 12 years now, and, and Tina likes it when I tell dad jokes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, she rolls her eyes, but you, you know she loves it. But... Uh, it was the last dad joke. Well, I thought it was a dad joke. I don't know. Maybe it was a, 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 a naughty uncle joke. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I told a joke that, that's setting some people off, and, and they've been complaining. Hmm. Jen, you know me. I, I don't like to step over the line. If I'm going to cross the line, I'm going to jump way over it with both <laughs> feet. So against my better judgment, I'm actually going to repeat the joke that's been offending people because okay. um, I want to talk about this and, and, and see what you think and see what our listeners think. I had mentioned that a group of fish is called a school and a group of cows is called a herd got to tell you, I was a little bit disappointed in Tina. She was a fourth grade teacher for a long time. <laughs> she didn't know that one. I also mentioned, and Tina didn't get this one either, that a group of crows is called a murder. Murder. Kind of macabre, but but apropos, right? Ed, mm -hmm. Edgar Allan Poe and Alfred Hitchcock Alfred would approve. Alfred Hitchcock, yeah. But then I also asked Tina, and this was kind of the punchline to the joke. I asked her if she knew what a group of Karens was called. <laughs> and of course, the answer is a homeowners association. Um, <laughs> and Jen, that was something that did that offend you? That's offensive? Um, no, it, it did not offend me. I, I think I'm, okay. my skin might be a little tougher than some. I don't know. I'm not very good with the with the vibe that we have in, in 2024. Well, it's hard though. to tell, right? Because, <laughs> um, I, well, I think, uh, well, our buddy Joe Messina has the show before our, ours. Yeah. And, and I think he would say that, that we've gotten a little bit too thin skin, that everybody's getting uh, uh, offended. 
But I also want to be, you know, I'm in education. I mean, this is an educational show, and I, I don't want to offend anybody. You know, my one of my heroes, Abraham Lincoln, said, uh, be strong enough never to take offense, but be sensitive enough never to offend. And so that's kind of what I want to do. Okay. I don't want to be so sensitive I like that, that I get offended yeah. all the time, but I also want to be sensitive of the, the feelings of others and not offend them. Um, so uh, well, that's a hard line to, to walk. That's a very it is narrow space. It is. Yeah. And, and who's to say, especially these days, you know, things have changed a lot. Who's to say what is offensive or mm -hmm. what might offend someone? And, and so you kind of always have to kind of be on your guard. Well, some folks have, have called in and, and have been mentioning that the word Karen, that term is actually hate speech. So I don't know. Um, so while the news was playing, we, we had, fortunately, I had a good 10-minute uh, buffer there. Um, I did a little bit of research, and, and so I pulled it up on, well, gosh, what is one of the most reliable websites now? Wikipedia. So I pulled <laughs> yeah. it up. So right here, according to Wikipedia, Karen is a term used as slang, typically for a middle-class white woman who is perceived as entitled or demanding beyond the scope of what is normal. It says the term is often portrayed in memes depicting middle-class white women who use their white and class privilege to demand their mm. own way. Okay. It says here that depictions include demanding to speak to the manager, which I know <laughs> is kind of one of those those key things. Yes. Um, being racist or wearing a particular hairstyle, mm -hmm. the, the, the bob cut, um, it was popularized in the aftermath of the Central Park bird watching incident in 2020. I'm actually not as familiar with no, that. No, not either. But I, I can sort of imagine. Um, maybe I'll look into that a little bit later. I wanted to get down to this um, this term, Karen, and is it really racist? Uh, again, Wikipedia go out, goes on to say the term has been considered pejorative by those who believe it is racist, sexist, ageist, classist, and controlling women's behavior, which, you know, I was raised by a strong single mom and working in education. I've always worked alongside and worked for women. Uh, our CEO at mm -hmm. iLead is yeah. a an amazing uh, woman who leads our organization. So that's the last thing I want to do is, is try to control a woman's behavior. Um, it says... Again, going on to read in Wikipedia, the term has occasionally been applied to male behavior as well. Um, and I've, I've heard some debate about this. As long as we're offending people, we may as well, you know, <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, right? Um, uh, the term has also been applied to male behavior, but I've heard them change the name. Uh, have you ever heard, what do you call a male Karen? Have it's not a Ken, is it? Well, I have heard people say Ken. Okay. I've um, also heard Chad. Chad. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. It makes me, well, again, we. I don't know if we should be laughing or not. We're trying to figure it out. Well, the thing is, too, like, I guess if we were to play devil's advocate. All right. Um, kind of where you were going with it, that you don't want to hold women down. You're certainly right. not that Absolutely. type of person. Um, I'm a middle class white woman, and so okay. I... By definition, I would fall under um, a Karen. So sometimes I think, you know, obviously every situation is different. Sometimes certainly there's someone who's behaving as such where they're very demanding and they're right. not talking to the person appropriately and they're they're kind of assuming that they're in the right. Um, but you could look at it like she's standing up for herself. She's, right. you know, speaking up for what is wrong. She feels maybe she was done wrong and she might mm -hmm. very well have been done wrong. Sure. And um, you and I were talking in the break that there was a time not so long ago where women didn't have the the right, the social um, kind of leverage to speak up for themselves. Correct. Right? right. They either needed a man to speak up for them or, or just stay quiet. Yeah, they and, weren't and taken as seriously. And, and I think women are certainly taken a little more seriously these days. Obviously, sure. you well, know, you hope, everybody's yeah. going to assume that it's, it's you know, I think a lot of it is perspective too. Sure. What and you experience. You mentioned, I think it has a lot more to do with the behaviors than just the... Um, the the racial and, uh, and and age connotation, right? It, yes. It's not that every middle aged white woman is right. a Karen. It it I think it's more to do with the behavior. Well, and you get more flies with honey, too. You know, you and How I could mean? both be, um, we could both be requesting the same whatever, the same outcome, right? We both had the same issue, and we both are approaching a quote unquote manager for yeah. the same issue. Sure. How you speak to someone. 
is a oh, huge difference, you know, I and, and I, I kind of tell my kids this a lot too, because, you know, they'll come up, you know, let me have a glass of water. No, well, no, uh, there's a difference. May I please? Is it so, okay if I, you know? Okay. So there's a difference between, you know what, can I talk to somebody else about this versus yeah. I want to talk to your right. manager. You don't immediately go from <laughs> zero to 60. I see. Maybe try and ease into it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, producer Sarah's chiming in. She says that she's heard that a male Karen can also be called a Keith. Okay. So, so that's interesting. <laughs> All right. But again, I'm worried about some folks have expressed, I told a joke about Karens in, in uh, hour number one, and some folks have expressed that that might be a, a, a hateful term or, or, or a term that's not very sensitive. Um, read the description on Wikipedia. I'm looking now on a website call, called arlnow.com. Um, they actually, they had a show that was using the term and they received some emails. So they received similar feedback to, to what I was getting. Um, they got an email that said, the meme Karen has evolved over several years into borderline hate speech directed against middle-aged white women who are unhappy with what they see as a deteriorating quality of life around them. So they actually took a poll. Okay, so this is helping us get to the crux of our answer, right? Uh, and again, if you're just tuning in, um, I told a joke about a group of Karens being called, you know, a group of fish is called a school, a group of Karens is called a homeowners association, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Some folks took exception to the term Karen. And, and apparently on ARLnow.com, they, uh, they also had some blowback. And so they took a poll, um, they actually took a poll. They gave three different options. According to that poll, 31% of their readers consider the term offensive and say it should not be used. So that's like a third of the people out yeah. there that, that probably were bothered by what I had to say and continue to say over and over <laughs> and over. Just like lean said, into it, Matt. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, right? I'm in this... Uh, <laughs> this never-ending quest to discover what it actually takes to get fired. Um, <laughs> at any rate, um, but another 48%, so this is half, 48% of their readers said that, that the term Karen is a pejorative, but occasionally useful way to describe a certain outlook or set of behaviors. And then the other 20% uh, uh, said that it's a completely benign term and shouldn't be seen as offensive at all. Um, so again, I, I think I might start staying away from that term i don't know jen what do you think where do you fall do, do you think it's an offensive term um i'm certainly not offended by it no and like okay. i said i would by definition i guess i fall into that category middle-aged white female okay um, i don't have a short haircut i can i can make that happen i'm sure and and really lean into it All right, right. <laughs> okay no i mean it's i i don't find it offensive but Again, everybody's different. Every, we, we're learning. It's so funny. I feel like a lot of the times as a society, we're kind of, it's almost like repeating kindergarten, you know, learning to <laughs> um, take turns, learning to say please and thank yeah. you, learning that other people have other opinions that might not match yours, and, and that's okay, you know, and, right. and so... It almost feels like a little bit of a stunted growth sure. sometimes. Sure, and, and I want to make sure that I've learned to be sensitive of other people's feelings. Sure. You know who I do, like, I, I feel this, I, I don't know if it's I feel bad for them. It's just really unfortunate because um, the name Karen, it's a beautiful name. It's very pretty. Growing up here in Saugus, my, my best friend's mother's name was, still is, Karen. Mm -hmm. Um uh, shout out to, to Mrs. Wilkin. She's a wonderful <laughs> lady. It's a beautiful name, and I just feel awful for women who have had this amazing name their entire life, and then all of a sudden 2020 comes, and and they've got to deal with this this term being, well, that 50% or, or more folks consider at least pejorative. And we've got almost 80% of the people that, that think that it, it might be a little dicey. And I think um, social media probably plays a huge role in oh, this, of sure. course. Social you know, that's just, it's like wildfire. You Wonders you, for yeah. our society. <laughs> oh. You post one thing and there you go. Now, now it's out there and now it's kind of, now it's part of our culture, you it know. Is. Yeah. So uh, another website I pulled up, I actually found this. It, it's a quiz. So you mentioned, Jen, you're, you're a middle-aged white woman. You mentioned you might be a Karen, but it's more about behaviors. So uh, you want to take this quiz? Yeah, let's do it. Let's All see. All right. So I'm going to take it and I'll answer and then you can answer and we'll figure out if you and I are okay. Karens or, or, or if I'm a Keith or a Chad <laughs> or, or whatever you want to call me. Pick which one um, you like. So uh, let's check it out. So um, first of all, first question, um, how often do you, you mentioned it, 
how often do you ask to speak to the manager? And here, here's your four options. Never, occasionally, but only if something's really wrong, somewhat often, or almost daily. Oh, I'm going with occasionally, only if something is really wrong. All right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I got to be honest with myself. <laughs> I'm a somewhat often kind of guy. So, all right, now these questions do get a little bit indicting. Uh, question number two, do you own any decorations that say, <laughs> <laughs> live, laugh, live, laugh, love? love. Okay. No, I do not. Okay. So the, the answers are yes, I used to, but not now. <laughs> okay. Nope. Or I'm not sure. So you're a nope, right? I'm, I'm going with nope. Although I, I'm trying to break myself of it. This past Christmas, I had, you know, like a little wooden sign that said, Merry Christmas. And then a little like quote from the Grinch, how the Grinch stole Christmas. Okay. <laughs> All these little printed out you know phrases so i'm trying to kind of get away from that a little bit uh, all right um, all right not necessarily because it's associated with a uh, karen or a keith but okay yes so i'm gonna leave you in the nope category <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think i've got to go with i used to but not now okay even though that's not exactly accurate um because while i've never had this one i do still have a sign hanging right by the front door of my house with house rules on it and it's got rules like be happy yeah. dream big laugh out loud and <laughs> and jen that I might live, count <laughs> well but i live alone you okay. know? <laughs> so I, I think i'm gonna have to go with i used to but not now okay that's fair all right question number three uh, again we, we're gonna start indicting ourselves a little bit you see an unfamiliar older vehicle parked on your street what do you do here's your four options you see an unfamiliar older vehicle parked on your street. What do you do? Nothing. Ask your neighbors if they know who it is. Try to catch a glimpse of the driver or call the police. <laughs> okay, well, it, it depends on how long the car is sitting there. Of course, if we're talking one day, no big deal. I'm not going to do anything. Right. If, it's, if it's going into several days, a week or more, then I'll start to raise questions. And then, yes, I will ask a neighbor, certainly. Okay, yeah. so you're an ask a neighbor kind yeah. of the person. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a lean in <laughs> trying to see point. if I can see the driver <laughs> because that'll give me information. Yeah, right? sure, sure. What do they have for lunch? Oh, they get their, yeah. my Lord. This is starting to remind me of what my father used to share with me about police work in the 1960s. <laughs> oh, gosh. Are we turning okay. into our parents? Is that what you're discovering Oh, here? I'm definitely okay. turning into my father. When Big T calls in later, he'll, he'll tell you all about it. Okay, question number four. What do you do when people don't agree with you? Okay, so when people don't agree with you, do you do nothing because everyone's entitled to their own opinion? Do you politely try to convince them to see things from your point of view? Do you argue with them or does it depend on the situation? It certainly depends on the situation, but um, I, I think I would, my husband would say I would argue. <laughs> oh. Okay, so so which <laughs> probably one are you? argue with him. Um, other people, if I'm at a at a store, for instance, if there's an issue with the store, no, I'm not going to argue. But yeah, my my poor husband will probably get the the brunt of the arguing. <laughs> okay, so where am I landing? Uh, let's put it. Uh, what was the the second option? Just sometimes, so basically. politely try to convince them yes. to see things from you. Okay, yes. I think that's where I am as well. I yeah. politely try to convince them that we are correct. Um, Okay, so you and I land in the same place on that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, this is not looking good for me. Um, question number five. Do you still, and I hate that they include the word still, do you still have a Facebook profile? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, so of course, nope. Only to keep up with older friends and relatives, or I'm not sure. Are you in, of course? Yes. Okay. And I also, that might be a generational thing, though, too. I don't know if that's totally, that's, I think that's, that's not kind a, of a what fair question. To. Yeah. I think that's so I guess like a Gen Z would to. not. So yeah. I am a heck yes. <laughs> Jen, I'm on Facebook Live right As now. As There so, you are. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. You're going to love this next one. Question number six. What do you like to drink? Soda, wine, water, or coffee? Oh, geez. Well, that's also silly. There's a time and place for all of those things. Um, Agreed. I guess if you're going just for your, your, your main beverage, um, water. Oh, okay. There we go. Well, um, 
But I won't turn down wine. It just depends on what time of day it is. (laughs) So I, I think just because I'm trying to be as honest as possible and there's only four options there, I think I'm going to go with wine because if you're watching me on Facebook Live, I've got my coffee here. <laughs> Love me some coffee. But I am that greeting card that I've seen in the drugstore mm-hmm. with – it is coffee all morning long until coffee passes the baton until to wine. Until it's time for wine, so, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I think I get mega Karen points for that one. Okay. And then uh, number seven, and we're, we're winding it down. Again, taking the quiz here on Eye on the Valley to determine whether or not Jen and I are Karens. Are you a Karen? S- question number seven is... Oh. <laughs> Great. Do you... Are do we you, almost to break? This is, I'm starting to we're sweat. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> do you talk about people behind their backs, Jen? Oh, No, okay. that's a terrible thing to do. I have in the past, but not anymore. Occasionally or yes. No, that's a terrible thing to do, but yes, I do it. <laughs> so those are polar opposites. I'm going to put you in yes. You are a yes, and I got to admit I, it. I'm going to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I, I, I ain't proud of it. I know. Hey, and sometimes it's good stuff I'm talking about behind your true, back. True, true. But, uh, but you, you know, after the show, Engineer Andrew and I will, will go to town about your performance. <laughs> so, all right, that's last fair. one. Last one. We're wrapping it up, Jen. We're trying to figure out if we're Karens. All right. Finally, oh, this one's easy. Do you think you are a Karen? Mm. So we've got, yeah, probably. I can be one sometimes. Nope, not at all. Or I hope not. Nope, not at all. Okay. Nope, not at all. Again, got to be fully transparent. I think I might be. So I'm going to go with, yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. So I've answered now for, for both of us. Okay. Do you want your results first sure. or mine? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, bad news out of the way. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Engineer Jen totally a Karen. No. Yes, it's true. You are totally a Karen. Let's be honest. Speaking to the manager, arguing with strangers online are your favorite hobbies. There's nothing you love more than buying live, love, laugh decorations (laughs) and your ninth monogram towel. So now that you know, it's time to get out there and apologize to all those managers that you've ever told <laughs> off. And and according to this, I also am every bit the Karen that you are. And all right. I think I'm probably a, a little bit more than uh, than you are. So apparently we've got some work to do. I don't know. I don't I'm know. Maybe it builds character. You can look at it that way. Again, <laughs> devil's advocate. Okay, let's so let's so try and find the positive you're doing in it. Society a favor. <laughs> all right. Stick around. Apparently, I'm not Matt, but Karen Watson, and you're listening to SCBI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCBI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. Well, <laughs> actually, while I'm Matt Watson, I, I we just learned last break that I'm a total Karen or... Or is it a Chad or, or a Keith or a Ken? Anyways, I, 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 we have learned that I've got some work to do on myself because that's not what I'm trying to be. That's not the image that I'm trying to portray. I, and you know, But you know what? I'm going to do some work on myself. However, I will not stop asking to talk to your manager because <laughs> that's just how you get stuff done here in the burbs. Well, it's early February, so you know what that means. Uh, New line, that's right. It's Super Bowl time. <laughs> it is Super Bowl time. Super Bowl's coming up. Oh, this is yeah. funny. Um, the big game is just around the corner. Um, it's a little over a week away. And after four months of battle on the gridiron, we are down to just two teams. We've got the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Um, you know, it's the Super Bowl is always so interesting because it's a, a huge event. Um, it, it seems like everybody in the world watches. And when you look at the demographics, you know, a good chunk of us do. Um, but not everybody follows football. I know Big T is not a huge – he's a huge college football fan. Oh, okay. But he doesn't watch pro football. Um, but Super Bowl Sunday he won't miss, yeah. right? And, and that's the case for, for a lot of folks that, that don't follow college or pro football, folks that aren't even sports fans – but they will sit for the five, six hours and and, and watch the Super Bowl. Um, so we got the Chiefs and the 49ers. Um, Jen, are you a football fan? Have you been dialed in all season? I'm a football fan by marriage. Um, my husband's a Steelers fan, so I'll kind of keep an eye, you know, one eye on the on the game a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I'll watch a little bit this week or next weekend, I should say. All right. um, I think a lot of people tune in for the spectacle, of course. They want to see, you know, bright lights and celebrities and you know obviously there for the food 
Well, yeah, so. our, our, our guest in hour number one, Tina, said her favorite musical artist is Taylor Swift. And oh. Tay-Tay, you know she's going to be there. She'll be there. Her hubby is going to be playing. Um, uh, Travis Kelsey, uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. You know, We learned last break that you yourself are a Karen, but you're married to a good <laughs> man. You know, they do say that, that uh, Steeler fans are some of the greatest people on the planet. Oh, uh, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, he he gets a little crazy when the Steelers are losing and not doing well. Which you is know. often these days. He's been known to, you know, almost try to throw a remote. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we like to do here on Eye on the Valley is if you are one of those folks that doesn't really tune in during the regular season, and but you get excited about the Super Bowl and you want to be able to, to, to talk to folks at the Super Bowl party and sound like you know what you've been doing, um, uh, let's talk about it. So first of all, obviously, kind of the captains of the, the teams are the quarterbacks. And we got some interesting quarterbacks here. Uh, the, the Chiefs quarterback is Patrick Mahomes, and the 49ers quarterback is Brock Purdy. Now, Patrick Mahomes, folks are calling him, which I think is, is kind of a funny and contradictory term, folks are calling him the new GOAT. And, of course, the GOAT is an acronym for greatest of all time. So how can you be the new greatest of all time if mm. it's all time? I don't know, but he is, <laughs> you know... Uh, Every year, it seems like his status is He's just He's incredible, up. yeah. You know, and they talked about the Chiefs not being that great this year, but when they got into the playoffs, it feels like, well, he just wills his team to win. Yeah, and, and he's fairly young, correct? Uh, well, I, I believe he's still in his 20s. He's definitely um, still in his 20s. So, you know, he's got a, a, a lot of time ahead of him. It's, it's, it's actually really fun to yeah. see. I'm from St. Louis originally, and as many people know, we lost the St. Louis Rams to Los Angeles, of course, and um, yep. that really hurt. You know, St. Louis is, is more of a baseball town. Yeah. Uh, so when the Rams left, you know, we were bummed out because it was it was really enjoyable to watch the Rams during, uh, what was it, the greatest show on turf in the like yeah. early 2000s. That was oh, a lot yeah. of fun, but it was, it was brief, yeah. right? Um, so St. Louis has kind of adopted the Kansas City Chiefs oh, as I their see. hometown. Yeah, uh, their and, home and you're right. Uh, Patrick team. Mahomes yeah. is only 28, okay, so yeah. he's still got – Quite a few years ahead of him, assuming he can stay healthy, um, but already being listed at least among the top five quarterbacks of all time. It's incredible. Um, some folks are saying number two right behind Tom Brady. Um, and yeah, like I said, his team is, is not as strong as it has been in years past, but it seems like just when he wants to win, he can make it happen. He's incredible. And then, of course, we mentioned Tay-Tay. Um, oh, Taylor boy. Swift uh, <laughs> earlier this year started dating one of the superstars on the Chiefs, uh, Travis Kelsey, their tight end, who's a, a, a shoe-in for the Hall of Fame when he retires. He's incredible and, and, and certainly, you know, one of the more famous athletes on the planet even before they started dating. And, of course, this has become the power couple of all power couples oh sure you know dwarfing ben affleck i was and, gonna and say Jennifer this Lopez yeah and, this makes uh j-lo and ben look yeah, like nothing yeah right and um benifer you know it's it's funny a lot of uh, pure sports fans are like what's taylor swift doing on my my football game but you know what i i love love and and they <laughs> seem to have such a sweet relationship um and you know some folks have, have cried conspiracy theory and oh it's a plot for sure, yeah. for better ratings it's a set up right? i mean come on the, the nfl is the single most popular sport in america they didn't need taylor swift to boost their ratings yeah, they don't need the help she doesn't need the help she certainly and doesn't neither need the does help. travis kelsey for that matter right? no yeah but if you saw the two of them after their win in the uh the championship game it was just so sweet um and so i enjoy seeing that and and, and it couldn't happen to two better people. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are just great human beings and uh, individually. So it's neat to see them happy and, and enjoying life, even though the rest of us are sitting there with a window seat watching it all. <laughs> so we talked about the quarterback of the Chiefs, the 49ers quarterback, Brock Purdy. Now he's got an incredibly interesting story. He was drafted just two years ago. He was drafted last dead last like yeah you ever been that kid on the playground no. you get picked last yeah. overall it's almost an insult now your dream has come true you've been drafted in the nfl but last overall and in fact uh, for years now society even the nfl has made fun of uh, embraced but still made fun of that last pick overall 
because they call that person Mr. Irrelevant. Because Jeez. it's like a 90% chance you're not even going to make the team. So he's warm in the bench. Right? You're, right? Exactly. Okay. This is the, the last time you're going to be on national television is when you get picked. Um, and maybe not even warming the bench. A lot of times Mr. Irrelevant, last pick overall, um, either gets cut or ends up on the practice squad. Oh, you okay. never hear from him again. Well, Brock Purdy, he got picked last over. And in fact, Mr. Irrelevant, they even like throw a... A party for him. I'm not sure if you're familiar with no. the term booby prize, right? Whoever finishes last gets the prize, mm-hmm. like, oh, the pity prize, right? Um, they they take him to Disneyland. <laughs> they, they get <laughs> gifts. And it's like, congratulations, now your career's over before it even started. Aww. Well, he became Mr. Irrelevant, showed up for practice, and just worked his rear end off and earned a spot on the squad, now third string last year. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, it's football and things happen. The, the starter and the second string quarterback both went down with injuries. He stepped in as kind of a placeholder. Hopefully we don't lose too many games. And he went on a winning spree. Yeah. Just started tearing through it as a rookie, as last pick in the draft, and, and just ended up being incredible just that's based really on his cool. work ethic. Well, Very that seems to happen a lot. Yeah. I, I don't want to say a lot, but that's happened before. Speaking of the St. Louis sure. Rams, Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner did that famously, yeah. you know. Famously bagging groceries right. until the phone rang. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, he, he won a spot last year before he himself was sidelined hmm. with an injury, and so he wasn't able to to see the team through and, and, and take them into the Super Bowl. But this year, um, he, uh, he earned that starting spot, still disrespected. Even though he's led his team now to a Super Bowl, folks wow. are still disrespecting him, saying, ah, he's a kid, he's going to be big-timed, you know, he's not going to be used to the bright lights, and, and, and folks are saying he can't win, but that's kind of all he does yeah. is win, right? Somebody should write a song. Um, <laughs> in fact, when you compare the two quarterbacks, you, you look at, you know, one of them is, a, is an obvious Hall of Famer, uh, the greatest or one of the greatest of all time already. At Brock Purdy still struggling for a little bit of respect. When you look at their salary comparisons, Patrick Mahomes this year made just under, and this is just salary. This isn't all the State Farm and the endorsements right. and all that stuff. Right. He made $39.7 million, just under $40 million for his annual salary. Jeez. Now, remember, people are hunting him for a living. Yeah. But <laughs> it's a Brock lot of pressure. Purdy, yeah. Well, he made $935,000 this year. Not quite a million dollars. That's a lot of money. Wow. Huge chunk of change, but less than a fourth of what Patrick Mahomes made. And now they're they're doing battle. They're going toe-to-toe. So I don't know how that works if he were to win the yeah. Super Bowl. Does that give him leverage to um, renegotiate? He, they, how does that work? Well, yes. Typically, the team will initiate the, the renegotiations. They'll want to do what they call lock him up. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because, um, you know, if he has another stellar year like he does next year, well, then his salary is just going to go way up. So what they'll do is they'll sign him for what they hope is a bargain okay. at the end of this year. <laughs> but but we'll see. Some teams yeah. do that. Some teams some teams don't. And he's still locked into his uh his four-year salary. Okay. So um, he's still got two more years left on that less than a million dollars a year. But he'll he'll probably get a bump, if uh, especially if he wins the Super Bowl. Even if he doesn't, he's probably going to get a, a, a new contract. I'm not a big fan of the 49ers. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a SoCal guy. I'm an L.A. fan. Um, well, not the Rams. I'm a Steeler right. fan, like your husband. <laughs> um, so not a huge fan of San Francisco. Um, sure, Brock Park... Uh, Brock is a uh, Brock Purdy is a great story, um, but he's no Cal, and we yeah. hate no Cal, right? Um, <laughs> I do like the stories, though. I love the I, yeah. the comeback kid, the you know the Cinderella yeah. stories. Um, I, I was really enjoying the watching the the Detroit Lions kind of you know knock them down and, and continue on. That was fun to see. Um, so I'm, I'm a sucker for that, but again, you know, on the opposite end of that, I really, uh, I think Patrick Mahomes is a a nice guy. I think he's he's a a good person, you know, so that's nice to see someone in the spotlight who's doing good for the community. And he's exciting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. He's exciting to watch. So, uh, so what's, what's the final verdict? You going 49ers or Chiefs, Jen? Oh, I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go with the Chiefs. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, I have no statistics based on that. I, I, think I just like their uniform better. <laughs> I think you're right. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to win, but against my better judgment as a SoCal, I'm, I'm going to be pulling for the Niners this year. Um, so, yeah, and then, you, of course, you got the, the snacks and the halftime show and, and all the wonderful things that, that go along with the Super Bowl. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Halftime is uh, Usher, right? Is that who's um, performing? I think it's Rihanna this year. 
Is it? Re- she did last year. It, did she? I don't she know. She did last. Oh yeah, it was last year. I, Remember, she was pregnant. Oh, that's right. That's right. She so was it pregnant. Is Usher's playing I think this it's year. Usher. You're right. You're right. You know, it, I, in my opinion, doesn't matter who sings. Nobody's gonna beat Prince singing "Purple Rain" in the pouring rain. That's true. My man was a genius. Rest in peace, Prince. All right, you stick around. When we come back, we've got Big T's five minutes of fame. We are gonna have. A lot of fun coming right up. This is SCVI, and I lead school's eye on the valley. I'm Matt Watson, and this is your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI, and I lead school's eye on the valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and if you're watching me on Facebook Live, you just saw me put on the headphones, which means it is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. Y'all know Big T. Big T is an executive and philanthropist. He's an amazing father, husband, and community leader. He's a world traveler. And in a world of Super Bowl hopefuls, he's betting on the coin toss. Here he is, everybody. He's mom's favorite. Big T, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. Also the Gatorade color, don't forget. Uh, all righty, all righty. As long as you're a sports fan. There we go. Um, so, Tony, we've got uh, Engineer Andrew in the studio like we do for trivia. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Good so, morning. Andrew, I, uh, it's been over an hour and a half, and i kind of been afraid to leave the studio. The, the bosses are back there. <laughs> Am I in trouble? Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, All righty. I, T, I don't know if you were listening, but I, I, I dropped a Karen joke in, in the first hour, and, and, and I got a little heat behind it. Some folks have been calling in and, and saying that that's not a term I should be using on the radio, that it's offensive, that it's borderline hate speech. Um, ha- have you been listening? Yeah, and I tried to warn you last night, Matt, but you wouldn't listen to me. So I agree with the bosses. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Well, so then this might be our last episode of Eye on the Valley. Um, I don't know. Um, but here's the, the real question. Andrew, Tony, did you hear the quiz we uh, we took? Uh, are you guys Karens or, or Chad? Based or on the quiz, uh, I, I hope I'm not, but I might be. <laughs> Based on the quiz. What about you, T? Are you a Chad? I'm I'm not going to answer because I'm not in agreement with using that term, and plus I've already been contacted to replace you, but I may bring you on the show periodically. Okay. Well, if if you do replace me and, and, and take over the show, just don't use the K-word on the air, all right? Understood. All right. Here we go. Uh, Big T, you got uh, some trivia questions for us. Um, I know Andrew and Jen, you, you all are dialed in. You've got your hands on your buzzers. Um, those of you at home, if you want to play along. Hello. You, hello. You there? Sounds like we lost Big T. Yeah. Big T, is that a landline you're joining us on? He's, he's All right. Cool. Tony, you he's there? still we got him here. here, yeah. All right. I tell you what. Um, we're going to try to get Big T to call back. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and, and set up uh, how we do trivia and uh, and talk a little bit. Andrew, um, I know you're a huge sports fan, and I, yes, I know sir. you've got an opinion. You 49ers or Chiefs? Uh, see both. Uh, can we end in a tie? That old can we end? Nobody wins. Oh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they would allow the Super Bowl to end yeah. in a tie. It would go on for seven right. hours before they would let it end in a tie. But uh, let's. I want to say forty. Let's go Forty ers because I am a Raiders fan and I'm done right. with the Chiefs winning. They're, they're okay. in the division, but I do have division a lot wins. of because we are in California. A lot of Forty ers fans, and I don't want to hear them either. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing worse than an insufferable no cal fan and if you are one well <laughs> you know i'm not going to apologize <laughs> um but uh you know I, I don't know this is an educational shoot if i'm already going to yeah. get fired as soon as the show ends <laughs> Might as well I'm, the, I, I'm, I'm pulling for the 49ers this yeah, year because uh before the season started i got me a ticket on the niners to win it all so uh so yeah so I'm pulling for the Niners just because my wallet's pulling for the Niners. Um, Andrew's hoping that uh, uh, that uh, I think there's big that T. both can Maybe lose. Him. So we got Big T back. You there, T? Tony, you got us. Oh boy, hmm. huh. we can hear uh, you. All right, we can hear <laughs> him. Fine. We got Tony. Hey, Tony. Boy, this is great radio. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, text my brother. Um, he says no one's picking up. All righty. Um, all right. So, Andrew, what's your go-to uh, Super Bowl snack? See, it's going to be chicken wings, but, again, I might go 
on the opposite side, there are plenty of great sushi places out here oh. that have the game day platters ready to go. So I might pick up one of those. Uh, okay, so be the be fancy with it. I was told once that um, since the fish markets in LA are closed on Saturday and Sunday, sushi on a weekend is not a good idea. Right? I heard so, no. I heard no. On uh, they're closed. What Mondays? And I heard so. Yeah. Don't get it on Tuesday or don't buy it on Monday. Or something like that. I heard I don't that know. too. There's some day that you probably shouldn't be eating raw fish, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a huge fan, and this might be controversial, but again, as long as we're making people angry, um, I, I'm not a huge wings fan. Really? You know, I, I was actually at yeah, a new, place, new place, across place across the street over the, the weekend. weekend. Oh, boy, oh getting boy, lots of feedback. I think Big T can hear us now. You got us, Tony? Anyways, they've got oh, some no, great wings yeah. across the street here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm more of a, a chips and guac kind of guy, a little seven layer dip. I'll tell you right now. I'm a traditionalist. <laughs> you can have all the avocado and guacamole you want. You, I pass on. There we go. You, you pass hey. on the guacamole. Hey, Big T, you got us. Man, we are just full of controversy today. Um, calling people Karen, um, talking about my, my Super Bowl ticket. And now engineer Andrew <laughs> says he hates guacamole. Oh my goodness. Oh, man. I know. I know. All right, Big T. Well, uh, our, our technical difficulties gave us a little bit of a run around, so why don't we just jump right into trivia. You at home, you don't have to hit your buzzer. Just shout out the answer if you know it. See if you can beat us, but uh, we're pretty good. Big T, what do you got for us? All righty. How many compound words are in the following sentence? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone from the classroom was playing baseball in the cafeteria. Frogger. Jen. Uh, and, and Andrew. Frogger. I'm going three. That would be free. Someone nice classroom baseball. Yeah. Yes, sir. What river forms the border between Indiana and Kentucky? Frogger. Frogger. The Ohio River. The Ohio River's correct. Yeah. Oh, how, okay. come you did, how come you weren't this good when the mail was on? <laughs> <laughs> Bring the math questions, I was please. intimidated. <laughs> the Great Sphinx in Egypt has the head of a man and the body of which species? Jen. Andrew. Jen. A cat? A feline? And oh, more Andrew, specific, oh, please. Oh, okay. oh uh, a leopard. <laughs> <laughs> a meerkat. Uh, a lion? I don't a know. lion is correct. <laughs> oh, I did want to not give it to you. Yeah, yeah that's all right. I'll, I'll take a quarter of a point. <laughs> the bassoon is a member of what musical family? Frogger. Frogger. It's brass. Uh, incorrect. Huh. Anybody Someone, else? Uh, not. They don't call it winds. What is it? Andrew. Uh, that's what I was going to say. But yeah. I, uh, I, I was going to say woodwind. You're halfway there. Woodwind. Yeah. <laughs> woodwind is correct. Like the All right. Okay. So, so who's getting it on that one? <laughs> Andrew. Okay. Andrew's, Andrew's getting that one. Engineer Jen has got the winds. <laughs> Another quarter of a point. <laughs> All right, how many how many feet are in four yards? Frogger. Frogger. This is fourth grade math, so I'm <laughs> concerned. I'm going with 12. 12 is correct. Frogger is probably about the math. Oh, oh my goodness. Let's, let's let's stick with math for 200, Alex. Please how many no. feet long is how many feet long is a football field? Andrew. Oh. Andrew. Okay, 300. 300 is correct. Okay, good. Got okay. enough. We're going to count the extra. Okay, mm -hmm. we're good. In Major League Baseball, how many yards is it from home to first base? Frogger. Andrew. <laughs> Frogger. All right, how much time do I have to do the math on this? I'm going 120? <laughs> Incorrect. Uh, <laughs> from, it is not 120 yards to first base. Uh, oh, I thought 30. you went all the way. Oh, jeez. I knew that. 30 is correct, Andrew. In my defense, <laughs> you know, Andrew watched me walk my finger <laughs> all the way he around. He was doing actual finger math. I yes. did. <laughs> I did the entire diamond. Oh, boy. How, how high is an NBA hoop in inches? Andrew. Oh, Andrew. Uh, uh, 120. 120 is correct. You know, Papa's sitting at home going, these questions are Jeez. so stupid. <laughs> how many miles is a half a marathon? Frogger. Jen. <laughs> okay. Frogger. No, I think it was Jen. Uh, 13. Oh, sorry. 13.1? 13.1 is correct. 
Nice. nice. Budapest is the capital of what European country? Frogger. Frogger. India. Incorrect. <laughs> As yeah, I'm shaking my wasn't. head, yes, but yeah, yes. you're right. Uh, Good one. job, Matt. <laughs> right region, Anybody? wrong country. Um, oh no. Uh, not right region. No. Oh, negative. Hung, hung, not Hungary. Is Hungary's right? correct. No. Yeah. All right. If a shopping cart contains one apple, two bananas, three oranges, and four hot dogs, what percentage of the cart's total contents is fruit? I, I got lost. I Frogger. I your question. <laughs> <laughs> Frogger. 60%. 60% is correct. You have six pieces of fruit and four hot dogs. Right. <laughs> nice. on, a, on a class field trip, there are four buses taking 36 students to the zoo. Each bus carries the same number of students. How many students are on each bus? Jen. Jen. Is it eight? Incorrect. Uh, Andrew. Uh, Andrew. I had nine. Nine is correct. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm on what? a different bus than Jeremy. What city are these companies headquartered? Nordstrom's, Zillow, Amazon, Starbucks. Frogger. Jen. Oh, man. Frogger. Seattle. Seattle's correct. What city, are, what city is these companies headquarters? Home Depot, Delta, UPS. Frogger. Coca-Cola. Frogger. Ooh, Andrew. Atlanta. I'm sorry? Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. oh, Atlanta is correct. ATL is correct. Who have tied it what up, What city are these companies head? What, what, what city are these companies headquartered? International Paper, AutoZone, FedEx, Elvis Presley Enterprises. Jen? Andrew. <laughs> Jen. Is that Memphis, Tennessee? Memphis, Tennessee is correct. Oh, weasel, weasel. Same question. Where are these companies headquarters? Little Caesars, General Motors, United Frogger. Auto Workers, Frogger. Detroit. Detroit is correct. Okay. Woohoo. Same theme. ABC. CBS, Calvin Klein, Foot Locker. Frogger? Frogger. Los Angeles? I'm sorry? Los Angeles? Uh, incorrect. Jen? Uh, Jen? New York. New York is correct. Oh. The other media capital. Jen's slowly sneaking Same. up on us, Andrew. Oh. It's a quarter of a points at health. It yeah. is. Same thing. McDonald's, Kraft Heinz, Grubhub. Walgreens and Hyatt. Frogger. Uh, Frogger. Andrew. Just based on craft, I'm going with Boston. Incorrect. Uh, Andrew. Uh, Pittsburgh. Incorrect. Jen, you got anything? San Francisco. Uh, Chicago. 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 We got time for two more, Big T. All right. What was Scooby Doo's nephew's name? Frogger. Andrew. <laughs> Frogger. Scrappy Doo. <Aww. laughs> Scrappy Doo. Last one. What was what was the um, Snoopy and Peanuts, his brother from the desert. What was his name? Frogger. Okay. Frogger. <laughs> Spike with the little wispy mustache. <laughs> Spike with the mustache, not as good as Andrew's. You're correct. I got to tell you, family members of fictional dogs is my wheelhouse. I did pull it off, did re re redeem myself. We got to wrap Big T. We also we want to thank our guest, Tino Toval, from Eilid AV Explorations, free public charter school home study program. Producer Sarah, engineer Jen, engineer Andrew, Big T, thank you for listening. Remember, life is hard, but we're all here to help each other along. Be well and do good, and join us again next week and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I'm Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and Eilid Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.